Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to the different ways that we notate vectors. And remember that a vector quantity is something that has magnitude and direction. And one such vector quantity is displacement vectors, where we want to go, say, from one point, let's say A, to another point, let's call it B. So suppose we've got A as being this point here and B is a point there. Then we can join these two points up and by putting an arrow that's telling us the direction and the length of the line tells us the magnitude, the distance from A to B. Although this might be drawn to scale on some occasions. So we can write a vector like this, A to B, as being written with AB and an arrow over the top. The order of the letters tells us that we're going from A to B. So, for instance, if I had this vector drawn, clearly it's telling me I'm going from C to D. Now, another way that vectors are written, and this is especially true when it comes to textbooks and reading from past exam papers, you're going to see that textbooks will write vectors quite often in bold print. They'll call a vector like C to D or A to B by a letter only. For instance, they might say the vector A represents something, OK? And that vector would be drawn as an arrow and you'll have an A, say, underneath it or beside it. Now, I've just handwritten this A, and that doesn't look very bold to me, so I'm going to have to go over that quite a few times to make it stand out as being bold. But that isn't very practical when it comes to having to draw, say, a diagram involving vectors. So when you're doing handwriting, what we tend to do is underline it. So if I had a vector, say something like this, and I wanted to call it A, then I would write it as A with an underline, or you could write A with a squiggle, both acceptable. I personally prefer A with a squiggle here, because when I do straight lines like that, it could be that you might mistake that for division in some problems. So you can avoid that just by doing a squiggle. So if I had a vector like this one, for instance, it might be called B. So if I was drawing it by hand, I'd just do B there with either a straight line underneath it or a squiggle. Now, another way that vectors are notated is by using something called column vectors. And to illustrate this point, I'm just going to put the vectors that we've got over a grid, which contains unit squares. Now, if we take the vector C to D, starting at C, we would move across two units, and that's in the positive sense here, and then we would move up three units, and that's in the positive sense. So we've got this displacement here as two, and this one here as three, and we write that vector CD OK, in column vector form as 2 over the 3 there. Now, if we were to write B as a column vector, then we start from this point here and we would move horizontally. We always move horizontally first, but we're moving to the left here. We move three units to the left and that's going to be negative 3 when that happens. It's in the opposite sense to what we've got here. And then we go upwards next, one unit, and that's in the positive sense. So when it comes to describing the vector B as a column vector, then we can say that B is the vector minus 3, 1. Now I've got another two vectors, this one here, C, and another vector here, D. So what do you think the column vectors would be for C and D? Well, for C, I'm not going to write the dotted lines in, but we start from here. We go one unit across and then two units down. One unit is in the positive sense, but the two units down 
is in the negative sense. So this vector C as a column vector is going to be 1 minus 2. And for D, starting at this point here, we've got to get over to here. We start moving horizontally first, so it's 3 units across in the negative sense and 2 units down. And that's going to be in the negative sense. So for the vector D, we can see that as a column vector, this is going to be minus 3, minus 2. Now, lastly, there's another way we can write vectors, and that is by using what is often called unit vectors, i and j. These are vectors that are one unit long. i is a horizontal vector described as column vector form, 1, 0, and j is a unit vector described as 0, 1. Notice I've underlined these two vectors, i and j. Written in textbooks, then they'll be written in bold, and they're called the unit base vectors. So if I wanted to write the vector c to d in terms of i and j, the unit base vectors, then I'd say c to d was equal to 2i, always do the horizontal first, so that's going to be 2i, then plus 3j. So we've got 2i plus 3j. If I took the vector d here and wrote that in terms of the unit vectors i and j, d would be minus 3i and then minus 2j. You'd still get the same answer if you wrote these the other way around, 3j plus 2i, or minus 2j minus 3i. But we do tend to write the i first, followed by the j component. Now this notation is easily extended to three dimensions. What we have now are the unit vectors i and j, but an additional vector, unit vector, k. You can see that i is along the x-axis, j is along the y-axis, and k is in the z-axis. And as column vectors, i would be 1, 0, 0, j, 0, 1, 0, and k, 0, 0, 1. Now, if I had a vector a, b, where a had coordinates 3, 5, 1, that's, in other words, 3 units in the x-direction, 5 units across in the y direction and 1 unit up in the z direction. Then I've drawn a cuboid round the uh, vector AB just so that it gives it a sense of 3 dimensions. And I've made this cuboid 4 units long, 3 units wide there and 2 units up. So in order to get to B, the coordinates of B are going to be well, the x-coordinate will be 3 plus 4 more units, so that's going to be 7. And the y-coordinate already is 5, and then you go across 3 more, so that's going to be 8. And the z-coordinate, well, we've got 1 up, and then we go another 2 units up, so that's going to be 3. Now the vector a to b can be written then as a to b is equal to... and Looking at this cuboid here, we can see that we're going 4 units in the i direction and then 3 units in the j direction, so we put plus 3j there, and we're going 2 units up in the positive k direction, so that's going to be plus 2k. So that's expressing AB in terms of the unit vectors i, j and k. You can write it as a column vector. If that's the case, we would write just simply 4, 3, 2. So I hope this gives you some idea anyway how we can represent vectors either in two dimensions or three dimensions, the notation that we use. Okay.